this kind of a day. We're sitting here uh, talking about the parents of uh, alleged uh, killers. It seems we're talking about Koberger's uh, family, where he came from, and uh, all of that in this segment. We're going to dive in and kind of understand where, you know, where, where this individual uh, came out of. And sometimes that makes some sense. Sometimes that helps answer some questions. Sometimes it just creates more questions. But it all goes back to that day why we're even talking about it in Moscow, Idaho, November of 2022. It was the 13th. We're almost up on a year on it here. Uh, four young lives, all students of the University of Idaho, snuffed out on that off-campus residence. Grizzly nature of the incident coupled with a media frenzy surrounding it, it uh, cast a very uh, large pail of fear over Moscow, prompting many uh, to depart for Thanksgiving holidays earlier than intended. Uh, following the extensive investigations, the spotlights turned, of course, onto Brian Koberger, 28-year-old criminology doctoral student at Washington State University. The sign of his arrest added another twist to the tale. His parents abode in Monroe County, Pennsylvania. They went all the way across the country, and that is where the handcuffs were put on Brian Koberger. Let's go back to his roots. They trace back uh, to Effort, Pennsylvania, born to Michael Koberger Jr. and Marianne Koberger. He grew up in a home seeped in the values of community service. Koberger's were employees of the Pleasant Valley School District. Michael as a maintenance worker and Marianne as a paraprofessional extending support to students with special educational needs. Interestingly, the school district also served as a backdrop to Brian's early job as a security guard. Though younger than his two sisters, Brian's turbulent past set him apart. At 19, embroiled in drug addiction, he was arrested for stealing his sister's iPhone. This blot on his record, however, erased by the Accelerated Rehabilitative Disposition Program. That's an interesting title. Uh, accelerated Rehabilitative Disposition Program. It's an interesting way to phrase it. I've heard of accelerated education, but not that. So it rehabilitates you from your disposition of doing things like stealing from your sister, shielding him from any lasting public censure. But so it wasn't uh, permanently on the record. It was taken off the record, but it did indeed take place. You never expect someone from such a hardworking, dedicated family to go astray, remarked a local resident. The aftermath of the Ohio, or the Idaho murders, rather, saw the Kobergers grappling with a torrent of emotions on this. Of course, and any parent would be trying to put all this together. Michael Koberger Jr.'s journey to Spokane, Washington, to stand by his son during the tumultuous drive back to Pennsylvania was particularly poignant. Their ride in the white Hyundai Elantra, an unsettling reminder of the crime scene, was marred by two run-ins with the law enforcement for speeding and for tailgating. I can imagine Michael Koberger Jr., if he knew absolutely nothing about this, and I really don't think he did, uh, mm -hmm. is, is looking back on every second of that drive with his son. And that's a yeah. long fucking drive. I don't think I've, I, I've never driven that long of a drive in one uh, just one straight shot across the country. I've gone back and forth uh, and probably about that distance, but just one long straight shot that they did, that is a long, long journey. Can you refresh my memory on something? It's It's been a while. Were they just driving back for the holidays? What were they doing? They were driving back for the holidays. And okay. and the dad just being, and, and people have poked at this a little bit, going, well, that's weird. And I think it really comes back to perspective and who your parents are. And if you have parents that are loving and care about you. Uh, and if you have parents that are more, you know, off to themselves or, you know, maybe just, you know, that's not their thing. Um, it's not odd for a parent at that age to to go and drive with their child if they're going to go on a long distance. Uh, well, and some people really like to drive and see the country. So to me, it doesn't seem weird. It, it you know, some people like to fly, but mm -hmm. maybe it was hey, let's spend some time together. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen you in a while. Mm -hmm. Let's let's hang. Let's, yeah. you know, be guys and whatever guys do on yeah. road trips. You know, I mean, if if Harper at 19 is going to go drive somewhere really far and she has no one, I'm going, going in that car with her. 
Uh, right. Well, absolutely. And I'm, you know, I'll be with her. Then I'll fly back or whatever. But I mean, at that age, you do. They're still kids. I remember uh, when I moved around in radio back in those days. In fact, that's probably how you met my parents was me uh, driving, yep. you know, from when I would go, you know, because my dad and my mom, uh, you know, the, he, my dad came with me several times on different trips um, when I was moving from place to place. It wasn't that far, but they were there. That's what they do. So I don't find that to be that bizarre uh, by any means. But mm -hmm. what a drive that must have been uh, when when they were going back uh, all the way from Spokane to Pennsylvania. Uh, so by their son, showing a lot of care for their son prior to the charges of murder against their son. The arrest, which possibly occurred in the parents' absence, came as a body blow to the family, struggling to reconcile with the grim reality the Koberger stood resolute in their belief that Brian was innocent initially. The sentiment echoed in their family's letter, which voiced their grief over the student deaths and pledged unwavering support for Brian. Yet the, conspicu the uh, conspicuous absence of one sister's endorsement on the uh, statement raised several eyebrows. The uh, tremors of Brian's arrest sent shockwaves through the immediate family. Distanced from their brother, his sisters have avoided uh, visits to the uh, Laidaw County Jail. Uh, the episode also dealt with a blow to their careers, too, which both reportedly were let go from their jobs uh, after this. Michael and Marianne Koberger already... Uh, strained under past financial burdens evident from their two chapter seven bankruptcy filings found themselves ensnared in further legal complications or testimonies have been sought to the mysterious case of the Pennsylvania woman's disappearance and subsequent death, which raised a lot of eyebrows earlier in the year. A lot of people were thinking is Koberger connected to this or what is going on here? Cause who gets called in uh, to, you know, be subpoenaed in specifically to talk about another woman's death when their son is going to be standing trial for the murder of four people uh, many, many states away. It seems like a little bit too much of a coincidence, but that's where that's been left as of right now. Feel back more of the layers. One discerns a complex relationship between Brian and his parents, particularly his mother. Former classmates' words stand testament to Marianne's nurturing nature, painting her as the most warm-hearted, kind individual. And it does take a warm-hearted, kind individual, I think, to work in the environment that she worked in, working with special needs kids. I I have a mother who did that myself. I have uh, a mother-in-law who did that sort of thing. Uh, and it's, you know, it takes a, a very special person to do that. Yet, the yep. warmth seemingly failed to envelop her son who, plagued by aggression and social challenges, remained somewhat distant. The very mother, a staunch Democrat with strong convictions against abortion and the death penalty, faced a heart-wrenching paradox with her son's alleged actions. The family's earlier financial struggles, marked by the bankruptcy filings, might also shed light on potential pressures uh, Brian faced, although direct correlations are very speculative. It's always the quiet, unsuspecting towns where such Intricate stories unfold, mused a Moscow local, summarizing the sentiments of many. So there's a lot of question there about what was going on. It was also a lot of uh, talk. I was reading people observing from the days of uh, his mother's uh, work in the school district, never really talking a whole lot about her son when asked or bringing him up, which could be just, you know, you're focused on your job and some people are, and they don't bring up family things. Uh, it could also mean maybe there's just a lot of things going on there that you don't want to talk about your son. We do know that he had quite a troubled past uh, in and out of uh, drug uh, abuse and uh, other just bizarre-esque behaviors that we've learned over the years. You know, I'm wondering what, have they ever really gone into the drug use? Where did that stem from? I, I don't think people typically wake up one day and go, I'm going to use drugs. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it stems from something. Is it, are you trying to medicate yourself to deaden some pain? Mm -hmm. Is it peer pressure? Where's it coming from? I guess that's my curiosity. I, this is just my speculation, but from what we've learned about Koberger online with the writings of him that we've seen over the years and his desire to just feel something, 
because we learned in his oh, early right. teenage years he was having a, a problem with that. I'm going to guess it was kind of one of those things. Sir, seeking out feeling, seeking out emotion because he was having a hard time feeling and, and recognizing that or, or having that, which is a sign of other you know, mental health problems that are going mm-hmm. on. Um, but I, it looks like he chose self-medication uh, to try and take care of it himself, which obviously was not a great idea. But yeah, it's uh, there's a lot there. There's a lot uh, we haven't heard really much at all from the family since all of this has been going on. It is interesting to note that they have not visited their son in jail, and it has been about a year or getting close Boy. to a year. Um, That's, doesn't that something about that feels off, doesn't it? Almost like they they almost and I'm this is just me speaking, but if I had a family member that allegedly did something like this. If I believed in them, if I felt like I could support them, I would go visit them. Mm -hmm. To me, them not visiting is sending quite a statement. I think if I felt that my child was wrongly accused of something like this and he's sitting in jail on the other side of the country, I'd probably move. Yeah. Because you got to imagine the hell that that person is going through if they're innocent. Um, And probably the hell they go through, too, if they're guilty. But um, but. If you truly believe that, I don't think you just let your son rot in jail uh, and not go and at least, you know, try and make a visit out there. Maybe you can't move for whatever financial reasons, uh, but I would at least figure, I mean, if you can get out there to pick him up for Thanksgiving, I imagine you can get out there to see him in jail if you want to. Yeah, it something about it just feels really disconnected. It doesn't that they haven't visited him mm-hmm. once and it's almost been a year. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what to make of it, but I think that's kind of part of it. Uh, the actions speak far louder than any words they could ever say. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.